Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, here we are almost at the end of July. And how are you doing? How is life treating you since last week, since we talked until right here, right now? Well, hello, whoever you are. Thumbs up to you as well. So, Today is going to be special. My intention for this week was to talk about grieving. Grieving uh, because two of my friends lost their family member, which I call it family member, their pet, their dog, to coyotes. Uh, it's not easy. Why? Because I know exactly what it feels like. About 25, 30 years ago, um, my parents' home is up on the mountains, and I had my poodle. I opened the door. My poodle went outside. It was a rainy day. And, of course, being in the hilltops and everything, we are in their territory. And next thing I know, I turned around, and two coyotes got my poodle. It was I can still hear the sound in my head, the screaming of my little doggy, but by the time I called Animal Shelter and I told them about it, they said, sorry, babe. So tragic, when tragedy strikes, it's not always about a death in a fa as a family member or something that happens tragically, an accident to us, but our pet is a part of our family. It's the love and the care and what we go through right? And for those who don't have an animal, someone made a remark of, come on, it's just a pet. But it's not a pet. It's a part of us. I believe in this conscious world that we live in, it is we are all one. And yet we are all unique in what we feel. Each one of us deals with grief in a certain way. Some do it privately, some share it. As a hypnotherapist, what I do with my clients, I help them release and express so they are not suppressing pain, trauma, and hurt. And it doesn't matter if it happened in the past or the present, but it is finding the means and the ways to share, to express, so that we can heal within. That said, hello, Claudia. Hello, Moshe. Hi, Annie John. Hi, Rich. So good to have you here. For those of you who are present, thank you for the beautiful emojis. You know, I believe things do not happen to us, but for us. And I had an appointment today for lunch for a special, with a special person that I met long, long time ago. And I will share that story. And he just walked in five minutes ago, just five minutes ago and said, are we having lunch? And I said, yes. But after my Heal Talk Tuesday, and lo and behold, it's so fitting to invite this person as part of my Heal Talk Tuesday today. And it is my honor, and it will be so wonderful. Would you welcome a good friend, an incredible human being, Jim Millie? With bridges. Hello, Jim. Ah. Hello, Lisa. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me today. And yes. uh, I think this is a fascinating topic because, yes, yeah, some people really they look down on us that we start crying for our pet who's who's been killed, and there's snide comments. There's things right. you know they they but you know my wife and I have lost a few pets, and it's it's really been painful. Um, we were in Africa, in fact, and someone threw poison meat over the wall and our dog ate the poison meat 
and was convulsing and we were racing trying to get the dog to the bed i had the we got a taxi and i had the dog in my arms and we were you know racing to a, a veterinarian and we pulled up in front of the vet's house and the dog took its last breath in my arms and you know i was crying of course and you know if our hearts are open and sensitive and if we if we love when when the one we love dies it's going to hurt and we're going to exactly. cry exactly um i have um uh, been fortunate to have many dogs and two of them i had to put down because they were suffering so much mm -hmm. that it was being in a gas tank and being in oxygen and having an oxygen tank to come home with wow. it was my body was my life and I decided I at 3.30 in the morning, I had to make that decision by myself sitting there and make that decision. What do I do? Do I become selfish and bring him home mm -hmm. for another day or two days mm -hmm. while he's suffering? Or do I make it easy on him? Some people will say, how dare you? It's like the Kevorkian, you know? But then I consider it, I saved him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and saves myself from going through the pain over and over. Mm -hmm. But Jim, would you share with my audience just a tad a little bit about who you are, what is Bridges mm -hmm. and how you and I are bridging. We can talk about that at the end, mm -hmm. but oh, come on. Sure. So my name is Jim Milley. I lead Bridges, and we're an organization that gets behind and multiplies the impact of local leaders who are trying to do great things, like Lisa is here, with, with helping children, and they're, you know, trying to get over trauma. Right. And so, you know, people uh, who are trying to do great things in their community, often they don't want to do the paperwork, uh, don't want to deal with the uh, IRS and the taxes and all Correct. these things so bridges comes around them does a lot of that stuff that's not very fun so that they can spend more time doing the things they love um, and your background is being a pastor also and a pastor a missionary and so yeah i've walked with a lot of people through grief um, mm. and myself i've been through a lot of grief myself right and and uh, family yeah family with my wife and um you know i, I to me grief is one of those things that tells us that we're more than just molecules you know like people what do you mean well it's so mysterious like grief happens and there's pain mm. and it's it tells me i'm not i'm i'm a mysterious being there's there's a i'm deep the you know, emotion the emotion yeah and the movement of our emotion of the feelings that we have inside as dr limpton says we are not just uh just a, a molecule but it's deeper than that it's rooted into our dna and yet we can still change the dna the mm -hmm. formation of that because mm -hmm. we are the essence of thought and emotions mm -hmm. so when you're seeing the molecule of that grief is a feeling mm -hmm. it's a deep-rooted feeling yeah and, and yet it so is love yeah and, but yet so like when my dog dies and i'm grieving right i'm also at the same time i'm also grieving you know my dad died maybe four years ago okay and then that's connected somehow like when i'm grieving i open my heart and i'm grieving so many things you know like every time now when i go to a funeral or a memorial service, I, I can I can grieve like all these things that have happened in my life. I don't just grieve one at a time or you know, I can I can access these places in my life and, that we have gone through. Yeah. And and I can I can find oh. healing, like I could do a little healing work in lots of places, you know, and I find they're all kind of like there's only one me. Right. And and I find it it's like I, I can enjoy going to a memorial service. 
because because I don't know I, about that one. Well, it's it's it's, it's <laughs> I don't painful. know about enjoying right. to go to a memorial service. Um, well, it's both. It's it's sad. It is. And yet afterwards, when I go home, I'm so glad I went. Right. I'm so it's so meaningful to be there with that person. Pay and, respects. Be yeah. there for the family. Yeah. And I was so like, I couldn't imagine having been anywhere else. It was so important to be there. Correct. Yeah. Well, in a way, when even as therapy, you, in a way you do therapy mm -hmm. in a, in a more religious uh, way than I do with hypnotherapy. And yet we're both holding space mm. for our clients. Yes. Right. I know what you mean. I think I know what you mean. Okay. Holding space, like creating some safety. Yes. Safe place for where, them to express. Right. Where they can feel something and not be afraid. Correct. That I'm going to shame them or tell them they shouldn't feel it. Or, right. Yeah. And they just feel safe enough and that, that they can just let it out a little bit. Sometimes just for a second. Yeah. Sometimes a little longer. And um, yeah, that's a privilege. And what I find is, I, what I love is it happens everywhere. I'm at Starbucks and somebody, you just create a little space for somebody and you, you just, the tears, you know. Isn't it because, I don't know how you feel, but I'm thinking, don't we as all human beings want love and validation? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the bottom line. We all want to feel validated and loved yeah yeah and be able to express before someone puts us down shuts us down uh guilts us shames us mm -hmm. you know all those uh, those are feelings as well but it's in a negative yes. connotation yes. versus the positive yes. loving nurturing way yes. of doing it yes. Yes. so that, that's where i get to have a little bit because i'm labeled religious i get to have a little bit more fun because some people expect negative. They go, oh, he's religious. He's going to be rude or mean. He's going to shake me. Oh, he's going to, you know, because I'm religious, they, people think like maybe I'm going to like tell them how bad they are. And then I get to flip it mm. and just affirm. And they're like, wow. You know, um, it's just fun to just love on people. Yes. And, you know, the, if they didn't expect it, it's even more fun. Because people in this world, uh, I think in majority in, they're not expecting love. Right. They're not expecting, I hug, I'm a hugger. I hug yes. everyone, right? Yes. I hug my clients. Mm -hmm. uh, whoever comes here, they know that I hug them, I love them when they come in, especially when they're leaving. So, because it's a human touch, it's a human connection. Mm -hmm. uh, from the first day I've yes. done this. I you mean, are awesome with that. You are awesome with that. <laughs> and it's, there's people who are not touchy-feely. Right, right. And I respect their boundaries. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing that I teach my kids the kids that come on saturdays mm -hmm. uh on behalf of my nonprofit, we're doing this kids mm -hmm. healing boundary self-esteem uh, uh social mm -hmm. uh understanding of this socioeconomics of where they are and they are afraid to express because either the parents will not understand it or the school and the, the bullying and everything. So they've been suppressing even children at eight years old, nine years old, they don't know how to express or yes. they go out, they express too much, not knowing their own boundaries. That's true. Yeah. So yep. we grow to become adults with all this suppression. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's manifesting and festering anger. Yes. Resentment. Yes. yes. Right? Yeah. If you can't because, express it, then you get angry. Right. Yes. Well, we start with resentment mm -hmm. and then the resentment because we resent not only them, but we resent ourselves for not giving ourselves permission to mm -hmm. express. Yes. So in a way, the therapy that I do is um, the evoking of what was. Mm -hmm. So bring it up to surface. Mm -hmm. 
and embracing who you are today, embracing all that you feel, validating your feelings mm. so that you can heal, so that you so, can evolve. So when someone comes into therapy with you, you're helping them feel those feelings maybe they didn't know they had or didn't want to admit or didn't want to let out. They knew they had them, but they sometimes they don't know them. they have it. Yeah. Sometimes mm -hmm. they put a lid on it mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. gone into dormancy. It's in archive. Yes. So yes. we open the archive, which is the subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's changing habits, it's changing behaviors and things like that. We are not born as smokers. We are not born as insomniacs, right? right? right. We are not born with the habits that we have. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we have to take the lid off just a tad, not pull it away. Right, right. So I like to call it peeling away the the band-aid. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I can picture the person you're you're creating safe space and the person is actually opening the lid from the inside. That's all they do. Because you're not pulling it off. That would right. scare them. But they're they're like peeking out and lifting it a little. And so let me ask you this. I hope our audience will. Hello, Tanya. Hello, Mahbube. Um, by the way, I would like to give you permission that you can also ask anything from uh, Pastor Jim uh, or myself. Mm -hmm. I know you've had tremendous loss in your family as ch your children. Mm -hmm. Uh, your wife having a miscarriage. Yes. Uh, you have a Down syndrome mm -hmm. child as yeah. well. See, the pain, I call it the evoking, is when even asking for it, reminding you of that, mm -hmm. steers emotions. Mm -hmm. And yet we know it's not happening right now. Yes, yes. Okay? Right. So would you be willing to speak about that? Yeah, and it, it goes back even farther, meaning my dad was an alcoholic, my mom was mentally ill. So I was a little bit of a half orphan when I was a kid. Okay, so that creates pain and issues. Then when my wife has a miscarriage, and then when we have a baby that comes to term and on her due date dies, you know, it's it's the the pain of that loss. And then you're grieving that and it keys in to the pain of childhood. Mm. So you got the pain of childhood coming up into the pain of the loss as an adult. And it gets all confused and mixed up, you know, and and it's it really takes a lot of work to compartmentalize know it. what is what. Mm. You know, and then my wife, you know, makes a little nonverbal at me one day. <sighs> and suddenly I feel pain. Right. And I'm angry at her. Well, I'm really not angry at her. I'm angry at the fact that I lost a child and that my parents weren't there when I needed them. The support. Right. And then I have to learn not to, to tell my wife, honey, I'm really angry right now. But it's, <laughs> and I could be angry at you, but it's not really you. <laughs> like, the, the, it's not you. So you don't have to fix this. I, I, I I need to deal with this. I, I need your comfort, but I, you know, I, I need to stop. I, I, I can't be super angry, overly angry at you for a little, uh, you know, a little roll of the eye. Um, that's my, uh, that's my issue, not, not your, uh, you know. But if we are not aware, if we have not been taught, mm -hmm. When someone saw it, rolls their eyes, my mom made a remark just yesterday, and I said, and what does that remark mean? And mm -hmm. she got flustered. It's like, I can't say a thing. You take it the negative way. And I yes. said, it's not the negative way. I just ask you, what do you mean by that? Yes. She started crying. Yes. I was late, and I had to leave. Yes. So it was like, I can't deal with this right now. Yeah. By the time I go back, it's this mother and daughter or mother and child thing. Yeah. I go back, we're not talking about that. Right. So everything is fine, and yet it is not fine. Right. So how do I know how to bring it up and mm -hmm. express when I say something, it's not that I am 
doing a negative. Right, right. I just want to understand what this means because this is how I decipher things. Right, right. It's very difficult. It's right. Very, very difficult. So I become this little kid. Yes. Right? Yes. And so how does how can you share? I know I can, but my my audience hears it from me. Yeah. Would you give the tools and techniques, maybe one technique, how our audience can compartmentalize and realize I need time right. to express yes. or to evoke it and embrace what I'm feeling yeah. so I can go back and deal. Right. And you know, you're asking what I'm, how I say it. I get it from others. So, you know, I, don't remember exactly who, but you know, I'm, I should quote somebody here. Okay. But you know, I call it, I call it activation. You get activated. Okay. Right. So you, your insides are, somebody touched a Scared. button in you, and now you're you're rolling on something that really doesn't have to do with the other person. Okay. And the way I uh, try, I, I mean, you know, I have this issue, right? So what I try to do is I try to say to the other person, you know. Uh, I'm struggling with a raw spot right now. Mm. Whatever you just did hit something in me. And so I'm going to me, right? I'm struggling with a raw spot right now. And, um, you know, I'm going to, I need your help to figure a few things out. And if they do not have the capacity or they're already angry, they cannot stop right. to help. Right. Then you know it's not the right time to continue. Right? Okay. It's like stop. Um, the, the, there's a book called Hold Me Tight. And, uh, you know, it's, it has, yeah, you know, you can get into the cycle or you can just try to stop the cycle. So if, if the other person, if you, if you say, I'm struggling with a roll spot and, uh, I need your help to deal with it, and the other person isn't ready, then you just pause and say, you have to, uh, I'll have to get your help with this later. So it's like becoming a me timeout. Yes, yes. I need timeout. Yes, I need timeout. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Oh, so that's what you call it. Is it me timeout? Yes, me, me timeout. timeout. Yes, me timeout. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes... Uh, especially parents who do this timeout to children, yes. we forget we need me timeout. That yeah. means I need some time to myself so that I can vent on my own or decipher it on my own or find out what is it that I am feeling yes. so I can come back and deal with what is. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because the... Uh... That sounds familiar to me. <laughs> <laughs> so may we open uh, questions? Sure. Let's absolutely. do some Q and A. Yeah. Uh, is there hello, uh, Vage? Uh, is there any questions? Is there anything that two of us together we can help you answer any questions? Um, by all means, whoever is here, uh, let's uh, let's ask. Any questions, any thoughts, any ideas from either me or Pastor Jim? Um, I don't see anything, so we can just continue on. Well, I could. Go you know, ahead. I, maybe I have a question. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> By all means. Yeah, so what's what's one of the, you know, like if, if someone comes in and they're having a lot of grief um, and they're feeling overwhelmed, um, you know, what's what's uh you know what would they experience in your practice like if they came in for the first time what what should they expect okay thank you yeah. well my main form of therapy is hypnotherapy mm -hmm. which hypnosis is just a tool mm -hmm. what i like to call it is i help my clients with my 3e method so I treat them as a whole. Even the smoker who wants to stop smoking, not quit smoking, because we don't like to be quitters, right? Mm -hmm. We are trained not to be quitters. Yes, yes. So we want to stop. My question would be, why now? Mm -hmm. And if it is because of someone else, then they may not really be ready because it's not for them. 
because my wife told me to. Because my wife told me to. <laughs> you know what is the most important one? Two things that it's very important. The ones who say, well, I, I have to save money. Uh -uh. Smokers yeah. will do anything to have that cigarette because the cigarette in a way is their buddy system. Yeah. So is the ones who eat. Uh, food becomes a way to nurture. Yeah, that's why I was a half hour early today. <laughs> <laughs> You're ready to eat. Yeah. <laughs> food, yeah. right? I'm ready, I'm ready. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what I do is treat them as a whole. Even the smoker is is smoking your buddy system. Mm -hmm. So let us find out all the internal needs in life. Mm -hmm. So I help them through relaxation on my recliner. Maybe one day you ought mm -hmm. to experience mm -hmm. it, Jim. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's either the stress, the anxiety, the insomnia, why we are insomniac is because there is a part of us that stays on guard to yes. protect, yes. right? So what is it that we are protecting? So we do the, all kinds of exploration and then I take them into the hypnotic state, which mm -hmm. is a deep state of relaxation or a very light state of relaxation in order for them to tap into that subconscious, the reservoir, the little archive shift that we are talking about so that we evoke the emotions from the loss of father, yeah, yeah. the hurt but, with mom, yeah, being but, an alcoholic, but, but, a child within. Yeah, but let's go to back to the experience. That. Like, so if I right. come into your office and I'd probably fill out some paperwork. Okay, you're right. talking about the entire thing. Yeah, I fill out there some is paperwork. A, what are the three things? You said the three E's? The experience in here, the method is the three E, which is uh, the evoking of what was, okay. tapping into the subconscious yeah. and the childhood. Right. Or the teenagehood. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. Right. It's the history. Okay. What's one E? What's the second E? Embracing what is the reality. What okay. I'm going through now. Okay. What is it that I need now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that we can heal uh -huh. the past, the present, to evolve. Okay. The third E is e. the evolving. Like where do I want to be? Who do I want to be? The transformation. Yeah. What is it that I want to be? Because we don't go backwards in life. That's why mm. when they say, I want to be size six, I want to, I want to go back to my size six. And I'm going, we can't go back to size six because you're at 10. Mm. What we want is move forward to become a size six again, really? mm. a new size six with a new you, yes. a new mentality, a new lifestyle, yes. a new feeling. Mm. So whatever it was, we just bring it up, recognize it. And why is it that we are no longer size six? Is it menopause? Is it stress? Is it grieving health yeah, in so, the body? So apply this to grief. So if I'm okay. grieving, you're gonna, I'm going to come, I'm going to fill out some paperwork, then I'm going to come and you're going to help me understand the past and you're going to use some relaxation, some hypnosis for me to really understand what's happened. You talked about your father. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about your father, yeah. it's a part of the adult within you talking to the little boy. Right, right. It's the little boy's father. It's the little boy that was hurt. Right. Mm -hmm. So I ask you mm -hmm. to go and sit next to the little boy. Yes. Mm -hmm. How can you mm -hmm. empower the boy within you? Yes. Because I can't. Yes. Yes. It's only you. Mm -hmm. And if you could say something mm -hmm. to either pat on his back or hold his hand or just sit silently, mm -hmm. what would he want from you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're acknowledging that within us, there's more than just me now. There's me at every age. There's me at every moment in my life. There is a me from the moment I took my first breath. Yes. From the day I was born. Yeah. So again, we're more than molecules. Yes. There's, there's this me at every stage. Me in the womb. Yeah. yeah. 
mean the wound that heard everything and, and felt everything yes and we can have and we can dialogue with those feelings yes with myself at all these different times and moments yes and find healing for each stage each stage yes so what i do is i help you tap into the emotions mm -hmm. without feeling it at the present you can't feel what then but you can feel for yourself now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and validate the feelings now yeah yeah so that's the past and i hold that's, space so you don't just like think about the past you revisit the past through hypnosis and yes it's like a video camera mm -hmm. We rewind yeah, yeah. to watch the video then, yeah. but it's not happening now. Right. Yeah. So that's part of what someone can expect to experience. Exactly. When they come here. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's very Thank nice. you. Yeah. It's like the lotus when I talk about the lotus because lotus is so significant in mm -hmm. my in my career. I bring it up because the lotus in itself it comes from the crud. It's the 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 deepest ugliest uh, mm. dirtiest part of the lake right the mm. river mm. and it's upside down until it's ready mm. to turn around mm. and blossom mm. so we evoke from down there mm -hmm. yeah it's like the bark of a tree the mm -hmm. roots are below mm -hmm. in the darkest part mm -hmm. and yet the roots are the strongest mm -hmm. which is our family links traditions okay yeah. mm -hmm. so if there is no questions if uh i'm no, surprised know. there's no if there's i know no I questions am about that that was a you know not everybody in america believes in this you know there's many me's and and you know you can go back in time and and have dialogues and things like that that's a I an think experiential it's thing right. yeah so uh since there is no questions that i see i don't know maybe uh can you hear us <laughs> are we even live i don't know are 31 we still minutes. 31 minutes we've been in uh live and i don't see any questions i don't see any movement unless we are not being heard if you mm -hmm. hear us show some emoji or something say something so we may be dropped no, <laughs> and we're talking know. right <laughs> no it's right there it's, it's, it's it shows away. we are yeah. live yeah. and yet i don't yeah. know maybe Everything we are not good. connected in one way or not but whatever it is um i hope this segment if you watch it on replay plus please uh Give, get back to us, do hashtag replay, ask any oh, questions. There oh, there's a heart. There we go. There we go. Thank you, thank so you. we know we are you know, live. Sometimes, well, what, you know, when I'm out there, sometimes I'm like, how do I do this? <laughs> you know, how do I do the emoji? How do I, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I hope today's segment was beneficial. Once a month, I'm going to come and uh, bring audience and guests for you so you can benefit from my guests that have plethora of experience and information and tools and techniques for you uh, where can they connect with you oh, you can Jen? go to www.bridgesus.org bridgesus.org and check us out beautiful okay. well i thank you mm -hmm. thank you god bless you god bless your mm -hmm. family and mm -hmm. all the work that you do mm -hmm. creating bridges that's right people all. people are bridges within us we, mm. have, we have cultures and when you have more than one culture inside you can be a bridge between peoples and that's what america needs right now oh beautiful yeah. and i usually like to say um, for the kids, whoever comes in here, there is a way that you can do a pledge. And a pledge is to place your hand upon your chest and say, I accept. I accept. And appreciate. And appreciate. Myself. Myself. Far more deeply. Far more deeply. Than ever before. Than ever before. I matter. I matter. Amen. God bless. Until next week, God bless you and may the universal light be with you. You may always find me at healwithin.com. Until next week, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care.